guide them through after school, after school programs, going back home. And when they get back home, I'm sitting in their living room asking them, so what did you see? What did it feel like? And I invite them to open their eyes and to begin to tell me and express to me what it is that they experienced during that kind of guided ideal day. And lots of times what I hear is, well, there's no graffiti. Well, if there's no graffiti, how do you see no graffiti? What do you see? And that's the key. If, if there's no limitation, if there's no lack, if there's no doubt, if there's no fear, then what is there? So we begin to shift the perspective from there's no violence to, ah, I experience peace. Ah, I experience a tranquil atmosphere. Oh, um, our classrooms are serene and calm. Our teachers are calm. They talk to us in a calm way. In a way, it's like, ah, oh, don't think about it. Don't think about what you don't see because there's probably no such thing as what we don't see. Like, because if we don't see it in the physical realm, we're seeing it in our mind's eye. Like, wow, there's no graffiti on that wall. But I'm probably picturing some graffiti that I've seen before. And so, right? And so if it's not there, what's there is, is beauty great posters that affirm who I am and what life is really about, that, you know, remind me of my multiplication table or algebra or remind me of a place that I might want to visit in the near future. I wonder if I've been going at this all wrong. I wonder for a moment if I just tell you Ah, oh, don't think about how great your life is and <laughs> how amazing and awesome you are. Ah, oh, don't think about your life is that life that God is. Ah, oh, don't think about how perfect your life is. If, in fact, you'll kind of think about, yeah, that's right. What does she mean don't think about it? I can't help it. It is who I am, right? I wonder if I kind of do the reverse psychology thing on you, if you would, in fact, just embrace the real truth of who we are. Not just who you are, but who we are as a collective, as a whole, as a people. And I wonder, too, how sometimes it gets, when life gets challenging, because, you know, some of us have been on this path for a little bit. And we kind of go, yeah, you know what, I'm doing pretty good. I've been, you know, I've been reading the Science of Mind book. I've been kind of getting this the idea, this thought, like, hey, my life is the way God shows up on this planet. My life is life. My life is joyous and perfect, and I attract that. And as a matter of fact, wow, just unexpectedly, I get a check in the mail, or I'm thinking about somebody, and sure enough, the phone rings, and it's them. And it was like, I was just about to call you. You know, we, you know, things start falling into place, and there's this thing that we kind of maybe call synchronicity or coincidence. But we kind of go, yeah, I've been, I've been doing, I've been, been trying to pray and meditate and call forth and affirm, and I've been doing this thing, and, you know, it's kind of working. Until we hit a bump in the road, until there's a hiccup until the bananas hit the fan, and then it's all over the place, right? It's nothing worse than flying bananas all over the place, right? And it's in those times that we get to ask ourselves, what am I thinking about? What am I entertaining? What are the things that I'm silently telling myself when things get rough? when things are kind of going a little bit sideways and I have, or I feel like I have no control? Am I thinking, this science of mind stuff doesn't work? Am I thinking, ah, well, I was just kind of waiting for, you know, for the shoe to fall? Or what was I thinking? I was thinking that I was, you know, actually achieving something in life.
when we get to those places, that is when it is so, so important for us to keep our eyes on the prize, to keep our eye focused, to be on point, to remember the truth of who we are. You know, for sometimes, sometimes for some of us, we might think, oh, well, you know, I'm on this path. Everything should be unfolding in a perfect way. And, every, you know, like everything should be going my way now. Like, wow, I'm doing this thing. You know, I'm really dedicating a lot of time. I'm reading. I'm in a class now. And, you know, like life should be happening for me. And everything should be like falling in place. And, you know, as a matter of fact, I, I have to call up the Grand Marshal. They should be having a parade for me. You know, as much stuff as I'm doing and being. And sure enough, when things kind of go a little bit sideways, it's kind of like, wow, we maybe start beating up on ourselves. What was I thinking? Was I really just fooling myself? And it's in those times that we have choices as to what we entertain, what we play in our minds over and over and over again, whether it's that broken record from our childhood, you know, some message that was, that we picked up and carried with us and thought, oh yeah, this is the truth about who I am and it's really not. Or instead, we can begin to to see life as this beautiful puzzle. I remember when I was new at Agape, um, there was a, an exercise that we did, and, and, and at the door, everybody got a piece, of, a piece of puzzle, a puzzle piece. And we were all just kind of wondering, you know, during the workshop, like, what is this for and what, what's this about? And, and at the end, it was revealed to us that we each held a piece to a puzzle, and we got to see the beautiful picture that was this puzzle. I didn't know which piece I was exactly, but I knew, and my lesson was that without that specific piece, the puzzle would not be whole, that I have a part to play in it, that I am a part of the collective, and so it is also with life, though. You know, sometimes the, our, own personal, our own personal puzzle is being assembled. You know, today's puzzle pieces kind of go in. And yet, if we kind of look at the breadth of our life and our experience, we might think that there's something missing. Or, golly, you know, like I wasn't expecting this to happen. Like this can't be a puzzle piece to my puzzle. Maybe this piece goes to Jan's puzzle, <laughs> or Bob's puzzle, or Dennis's puzzle. Like, this one can't be my puzzle piece. It's ugly. It's got a weird shape. It doesn't fit what I thought my breath of life is supposed to be. It may be a loss of a job or loss of health. It could be the breakup of a relationship. It could be a challenge, a physical challenge, a mental health challenge. It could be something that we say to ourselves, but this does not belong, like this can't be mine. But it is, Blanche. It is. And what do we do with that? What do we do with that? Do we say, yes, it's mine, and embrace it, and maybe try to find where it fits or how it fits? Do we try to discard it or give it to somebody else? Or do we recognize it for the gift that it is, that it is an opportunity for us to rise to knowing the truth of who we are? For us to know that there's one power, one presence, one life, that that life is God, is this energetic, this, this non-personal but very personal to me energetic and force 
creative intelligence and that it has created me out of it, it has created everything out of it, therefore what's true of this creative intelligence is my truth. It's my opportunity to know that, that even though I may have lost this job or lost a relationship or have an experience of ill health or that something is happening, I get an opportunity to stand in this truth and I uh, don't think about the lack, the limitation, the doubt, the fear, the, the wars, the rumors of wars, not think about that kind of stuff, but to begin to really anchor my thought process and my belief system in that which is the truth of who I am. In that which is the truth of you. So even when you are acting ugly or being mean to me or being mean to someone else or maybe you're not showing up as your best self, what I get to know instead of going behind your back and talking to my friend, oh, did you see the way she was acting? She was just so mean. Oh, and she calls herself a practitioner. Oh, my gosh. You know, like instead of going there with that, why don't I just stand in the truth and know this is the way God is showing up right now, and I know that this is not the allness of who she is or who he is. Maybe at one point, so-and-so is forgetting the truth of who they are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stand in the gap between them and the truth. I'm going to stand in that gap, and I'm going to know the truth for and about my brother or my sister or my friend or my neighbor instead of talking about him or her. But I'm going to stand in that gap, and I'm going to know the truth about them, they're right where they are. This is the, the infinite intelligence is, is who and what they are. And that instead of me stooping down to a level of lack or limitation or doubt and fear, that I am actually rising the vibration so that my beloved, my beloved community, my beloved brother or sister, my beloved friend or neighbor is actually being called forth to rise to their truth, to rise to their greatness. Is it easy? Not always. Does it get easier? You bet. You bet. Because when this becomes a way of life for us, when this becomes the way we operate, when this becomes our MO and our way of being, then it's just our way of being. That irrespective and regardless of the behavior that we're standing in that truth and that we're knowing the truth about ourself and about our mirror and our mirrors. Because that's exactly what, uh, what Ernest Holmes talks about. He talks about life being a mirror for us. He said that today, in, in today's writing. Where is it? Ah, right here. One should never allow himself to think of or talk about limitation or poverty. Life is like a mirror and will reflect back to the thinker what he thinks into it. So, <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So what I think of you? Who, who wants to finish that for me, right? <laughs> what I think of you is really a reflection of what I think of myself. So I want to be saying, oh, how beautiful and wonderful and marvelous and intelligent you are. I want to be calling you the most magnificent names I can possibly come up with. I want to be knowing the highest truth for and about you that I can possibly think of. Because life is a mirror and will reflect back to the thinker. Well, let me just put me. Life is a mirror and will reflect back to me what I think into it. What I think into it. So that even means that even without you in the picture, if I'm thinking and entertaining 
And for me, I like to call it courting. You know, when you like somebody and you spend some time with them and you really want to hang out, whether it's a friend or whether it's a love interest, right? It's like you find, you find somebody you're, that you think, oh, this might be a nice friend. You know, you start calling that person or you start hanging out with that person after school or after work or whatever it is. You start spending time like, oh, this person's pretty cool. You start investing time. There's an investment. There's an investment there. You have a stake in that relationship. We're going to go to GameStop after school. We're going to go to dinner. Where are we going to go to a movie? We're going to go surfing. Are we joining the knitting club? I mean, whatever it is. When we invest time with people, with things, with opportunities, if we were to invest that kind of time, a.k.a. courting spirit, courting our, our knowledge and our communion in that which is the truth of who we are, if I were that interested in my own spiritual evolution and growth, wow. Think about the person that you've, you know, like done the, have done the most for to capture their heart or their attention or their love or just wanted to spend some time with and think about how smitten you were about it, you know? Think about how much time or energy you spent maybe learning a computer program or learning how to play pool or learning how to surf or learning how to play softball or learning how to knit or do whatever it is. Think about that kind of dedication and time that you've done for this person, for the attention of this person, or just to even gain a specific skill or knowledge. And imagine that that was the kind of energy and that we put that kind of energetic into knowing our truth and to thinking in, in a grand way. To thinking in a grand way and seeing then in a grand way who we are and what life is really all about. I have uh, an opportunity to hire someone who would do some work around the house and around our property. Um, his name is Daniel. And my experience with him was amazing and he taught me so much because my experience with contractors or handymen or people who come to kind of, you know, fix something, they'd kind of go, oh, yeah, that light is really messed up. Who installed that? They did it all wrong. <laughs> you know, like that thing is tweaked and they should have actually placed it this way. And instead, Danielle would come to the house and I'd tell him the things that I needed to have fixed, but he would walk throughout the property and go, wow, that's a beautiful fountain. Who put that in? The, it's very leveled. Oh, and the way the water sounds. Whoever did that did a really good job. What? <laughs> like, I thought to myself, who does that? He does. It has become such a way of life for him that instead of looking to point out the flaws, instead of looking to point out the limitation, instead of looking to pick and pick and pick, and this is what's wrong with you and you and you and you, instead he was going around going, this is what's right with this and what's right with this, and this is what's beautiful about you, and this is what's great about you. And the more and more I sat with, with just the way he was, I felt so wonderful. He wasn't coming to, to destroy, but he was coming to lift. And those are the kind of people I want to be around. I want to be around people who lift me up, who lift up the energetic of the people around them, not because they're lying to you, not because they're telling you what a great dress and it is hideous, <laughs> but because they are finding these, these truths about you and they're, they're just, ah illuminating them. They're reminding you of them. 
If that's who we can become in our daily life, if we can indeed begin to recognize that this is who we are and not only do it for ourselves to where we are lifting ourselves up, but that we begin to also do it with others. You know, I've been doing um, a lot of work in restorative justice and having restorative conversations and the reason it's called restorative is because it's just a different way of looking at it, kind of like how Danielle talks about work that's done around the property. And the reason um, right now it's kind of like we call it restorative because it's really about trying to restore folks to their wholeness, to remind them of the truth of who they are. You know, it's, it's a little scary to call it transformational justice or transformative justice, right? But... So we're restoring folks to their wholeness. So it's interesting that the conversation and the way that it is framed is really about holding one another accountable, talking about how we feel, but also looking and bringing out the best in folks. You know, and some of us already do that. Some of us have already been taught that. Like, before you give a criticism, give a compliment. I don't like to call it a criticism, I like to call it feedback. So before you give feedback, talk to, you, talk to whomever you're talking about, about what's so right. Tell that person how much you love them, how glad you are to see them, how glad you are that they're in your life, even though they're late for the fifth time in a row. <laughs> Share about what your need is for timeliness and why it's important to you and what you need from them. And in this way, we begin to really lift each other up. We begin to not be that drowning person in a lake or in the ocean or in a river, but as a result of being with one another, we feel buoyed. We feel like we're floating, like, no, I'm not drowning anymore. I've just encountered myself in this other person, and they reminded me of the truth of who I am. They saw that even through all the muck and the junk and all of the circumstances and situations, they know and they see the truth of who I am. They know what I'm capable of doing and being, and they lift me up, even though I frustrated them, even though I, I did something that was upsetting to them. It's interesting to begin to have this shift in our consciousness, in our mentality, in the way we are with one another. Ah, don't think about the lack, the limitation, the way people are behaving. Don't think about that. But in fact, think about and entertain that your life is the way that life is expressing on this planet, that your life is the grand divine way that God is showing up on this planet, that each and every life is the same, meaning each and every life is the way that God is expressing on this planet, and begin to treat one another and treat yourself from that place. When you find yourself in trouble, when you find yourself thinking this puzzle piece doesn't fit my puzzle of life, think of it as a gift and find the place where it belongs. Because right after that, the next piece that goes into that piece, that interlocks with that piece, is that piece that we go, oh yeah, now that's what I'm about. But without the one to interlock to, we don't have that opportunity to go, yeah, yeah, that's the sweetness I was looking for. That's the sweet spot that I was looking for. Yes, this is the type of appreciation I give and I receive. So we have these opportunities to grow. We have these opportunities to learn. And we have these opportunities so that we may step up and step into our greater truth, that we might know our life as a life of God. 
So let's just go into the silence for a moment. And as we simply just clear our minds, our laps, our surroundings for a small, small time in the stillness and the silence. I turn back to the words of Ernest Holmes. And if I remember these words and I remember these truth about who I am, if I entertain this, then I find that everything always flows together for my highest good and the highest good of all around me. Ernest Holmes says there is one infinite mind from which all things come. This mind is through, in, and around me. It is the only mind there is, and every time mankind thinks, he uses this power and presence. There's one infinite spirit, and every time man says, I am, he proclaims it. There's one infinite substance. And every time mankind moves, he moves in it. There's only one infinite law. And every time mankind thinks, he sets this law in motion. There's one infinite God. And every time mankind speaks to this God, he receives a direct answer. One, one, one. I am God and there is nothing else. There is one limitless life which returns to the thinker exactly what he thinks into it. One. 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 I am one with this power and this presence. And that which is true of life, of God, of love, of peace, of joy, of abundance, of clarity, of power, of presence, of wisdom, of truth, of joy, is true of me.
good flows, good shines, good flows to me. me and so I purposefully think my life is amazing my life is abundant filled with joy beauty and creativity. My life is filled with clarity and kindness and peace and power and love. My life is filled with wonderful people who are honest and truthful who enjoy life, who are filled with love. I'm surrounded by love and joy and peace and clarity. All of my affairs are in order. Everything is coming together for my highest good. Health is mine and now. I see myself moving and flowing. Every organ, every action, every cell in my body, everything is working together for my highest good. There is perfect elimination and absorption. Everything, everything comes together for my good. And as it comes together for my good, I know that there is no individual good, but there is the good of the collective. So as it is happening for one, it is happening for all. So in the life of my brothers and sisters, my families, my friends, the divine humanity, I consciously think and see in my mind's eye peace in the land, peace in Ferguson, peace in all the world. Peace in my home, peace in my mind, my neighborhoods. I see abundance, that there's enough, enough food, enough water, enough supply to feed and comfort all of humanity. I begin to entertain that begin to see smiling faces in my ideal day, begin to see me interacting with neighbors and strangers who are really my brothers and sisters that I haven't met yet, and exchanging love and that energetic of love, for I can see beyond the surface. And I can truly say, I know who you really are. You are the way that love, that life that God is expressing on this planet. And I care. And I spend time thinking about that, seeing it in my mind's eye, and then living from that place. Because I believe that it is indeed possible, that it is indeed our divine destiny, that we awaken to this truth. 
And so from this place, I'm simply calling forth our health, our wholeness, peace, our abundance, love, joy, beauty, and creativity in our life as our life. And that we experience this to the fullest degree, being free of all discord and entertaining only God, entertaining God only, entertaining peace, truth, and love. Ah. So we give thanks, and together the community says, and so it is. Amen. Ah, welcome back. Thank you, Jim. That was beautiful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So it's our conscious giving time. I'd like to invite Melissa and Dennis up. Thank you so much for your sacred service week after week. What great consciousness you have. I love their consciousness because they have set themselves up. They have set themselves up that every week they pick up this little basket and then every week it just gets filled (laughs) with gifts and tithes and offerings and that they get to participate in that flow and they get to witness that flow. So thank you so much for your consciousness. It is our conscious giving time, time now for us to share with our spiritual community our financial blessings, that which we brought forth to share, knowing that Seaside is a beautiful spiritual community that is indeed a great steward with what it is given and that we use that which we are given not only for our programs and our services but that our doors are kept open, that anyone may come and hear the message and have revealed to them the truth of who they are. So thank you so much for your generosity, for your generous hearts, for the way that you give, for the way that you stretch in your giving. And thank you so much for making Seaside your home. So as you take your gifts, your tithes, your offerings, that which you brought to share with the spiritual community, you can simply hold it over your heart as a sign of love, simply becoming grateful, that this financial blessing has come your way in the first place and that you're just simply taking a portion of what you've been given and you're simply passing it forward through to Seaside. So give it your own blessing. And as you drop it in the basket, know that as you give, you receive even to a bigger degree, larger and larger and larger. So we simply bless these gifts, these tithes, these offerings, knowing that they are used for our highest good as a collective. And so it is. Amen. Go forth, ushers. Multiply this consciousness. And of course, as you give, you receive. So open your hearts and receive the beautiful music of our music team, Cole Miller, Jim Bianchi, and the beautiful sunny day. Let's give Reverend Sunshine some more love. If you
Day, Jim Bianchi yes. and Cole Miller. Thank Beautiful you. job. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I felt it. Yeah. You felt it too. Yeah. This is the time in our evening that we're at the top of the hour, but it's so imperative and so important to hear from one another. So this is a time uh, where we get an opportunity to hear from you. And aha, uh -huh, something that was like, wow, a light bulb that went off. Uh, yeah, there we go. A light bulb went off right here. Hey, beloved, how are Hello. you? Hello, fantastic. Stand up and tell everybody your name. Hi, my name's Carrie. Um, my partner, Diane, and I were fortunate enough last weekend to go to Oprah's Get the Life You Want tour, which was fantastic. And to spend uh, time with over 10,000 people in the same room, like-minded, that energy, to say awesome doesn't shed a light. But... Something she shared, there was an exercise that we did that kind of hits home with the message tonight and this week, and that is um, she would ask her audience after the Oprah show, what do you want? And mm -hmm. most people just say, I want to be happy. And so she would say, what does that look like? And people have a difficult time deciding what that looks like, and we're learning that we manifest and the vision is important and the more details. And an exercise we did said, picture someone that you love, could be your partner, your child, a friend, a neighbor, and write down everything you want for their life. Be as specific as possible. The home they live in, the car they drive, the job they have, the friends, the feelings, the health, the laughter, mm -hmm. in all the detail. 
And it's very easy, and it, we were writing for a very long time, and at the end of the exercise, what we realized was, this is what we want for ourselves. And that you can't wish or want something for someone you love that you don't want for yourself. And so it was just that, that exercise just hit me tonight with your message. So thank you Excellent. Very much. Thank you, Carrie. All right. Well, anybody else? Any burning desires? I think that said it all. Wow. I love when, uh, when we get a chance to hear from folks in our community because it just reminds me of the truth of who we are and that we're all revealers of truth. Um, and it's just a beautiful thing to, to hear from one another what we learn, what we pick up, what we're doing, how we're doing, so that we can continue to hold each other up and lift each other up and encourage one another. So thank you, Ginny. Ginny's our coordinator. She makes sure everything runs smoothly. Thank you so much for your service. I so appreciate you. Tonight on sound, we have Ed Reeves. Ed Reeves, thank you, beloved. We sound marvelous, darling, marvelous. And tonight behind the camera, we have Greg and we have Tim as well, who makes sure that our home viewers and people at home can see us and be here with us. So if you're here with us tonight, thank you so much for your presence. And uh, thank you so much, Greg and Tim, for your sacred service. I so, so appreciate that. Want to make sure that I thank our music team. Cole Miller, thank you on percussion. Jim Bianchi on piano and vocals, thank you. And Sunny Day, thank you, beloved. And of course, I want to make sure that I thank our practitioners. Our practitioners are these people who have had a lot of practice and they've been taught to see the truth and kind of go to that place. And so representing our practitioner core, because we have lots of practitioners here at Seaside, um, representing our practitioner core tonight was our beloved Jan Hartman. Thank you so much, Jan, for your reading, your prayer, your consciousness. And um, also we have Victoria Grace, who's been in the back. I think that's her back there. Thank you so much for simply radiating the light and knowing the truth for and about our service. And mostly, thank you for showing up tonight, for being hungry enough and thirsty enough to seek and to recognize what is for you. So take what you've received tonight. Try it on. Feel it. Work with it a little bit and watch how your life transforms. Watch. All right. Um, after service tonight, we're just going to kind of be in the family room, giving some hugs and just kind of chatting it up before we um, go home. So please make sure that uh, you get a hug for me. I got, I think, a hug for everybody in this room. So make sure that um, we just have a moment to fellowship in the back. I think that's it. So. Please rise. Come forth, Hallie. Come forth. Come forth. Come forth. Let's, let's sing our prayer. It's in your bulletins, but you don't really need it. Just come and feel it with us. This is our prayer, a song of peace. We get to be the change. We want to see with open hearts and open hands. We lift our voices in love we stand. This is our prayer, a song of peace. We get to be changed we want to see with open hearts and open hands we lift our voices in love we stand we lift, we lift our voices in love we stand Love we stand.
love you. I mean it. See you in the family room. I had dreams so big and loud and dreams so wide. I touched the clouds. Whoa, oh, 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 out to the sky, we dance with monsters through the night. Whoa, oh, 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 I'm never gonna look back. Whoa, never gonna give up. Oh, please don't wait me now. Thank you. This is gonna be the best days of our life. Best day of a life.